Ryan Little. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Before I get into this video, I am going to eat this delicious breakfast, and it's completely vegan, so I wanna show you guys what I'm having. It's just an everything bagel with some herb spread. This is local, but there are a lot of vegan cream cheese alternatives now in the grocery store. And then I added some tomato, avocado, thinly sliced red onion, a tiny drizzle of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then of course I'm having some fresh fruit. This is like the true definition of taste the rainbow. I think I'm eating all of the colors, except maybe blue. I am also on my third glass of water for the day, about to refill that, and I'm just going to sit down and enjoy this amazing breakfast that I made for myself. Today I wanted to focus on things I do when I'm feeling sick or under the weather. So this is kind of going to be a sick routine with a lot of natural remedies and recipes. Um, I know there are a lot of things happening in the world right now and we are going through some frightening times with coronavirus. Uh, this video is not really going to focus on that, but if you'd like to hear some of my thoughts and feelings around the epidemic happening, then I have posted those on Instagram, as well as in the community forum on YouTube. I hope everyone out there is uh, staying calm and, you know, finding ways to reach out to the people they care about. Uh, and I thought it would be just an appropriate time to kind of talk about things I do to boost my immune system and just take the best care of myself that I can. Um, aside from coronavirus, this is usually the time of year when I have really, really bad seasonal allergies just as the season is starting to change. And right now we've been getting a ton of rain in Los Angeles. And as much as I love the rain, it is literally my favorite weather. Uh, it does have some like repercussions on my sinuses and just I usually get a lot of like pressure and headaches and things like that. So I've been feeling 
not 100% for the past couple of weeks and I just wanted to show you kind of what I've been doing. Before I get into the recipe portion, I wanna give you a couple of quick tips right off the bat for things that I would recommend if you're feeling sick. The first one is do your best to stay home and limit your exposure to other people uh, to the best of your ability. I know this is not always 100% possible, but I think it's a common courtesy and it just helps keep everyone else healthy. The second thing is make sure you are staying hydrated and increase your fluid intake. This can include water, juice, broth, tea, things like that. And I do try to limit uh, things that have a lot of added sugar, but in general, you wanna make sure that you're getting a lot of fluids. I'm actually going to give you some of my favorite at-home tea recipes in a little bit, so stay tuned for those. My next tip is just to relax and take it easy. I know this is really hard, especially in times like these, but uh, stress can really affect your immune system, so you wanna try your best to just go easy on yourself and find an atmosphere that's relaxing in your home. For me, this often includes just decreasing my time on social media and limiting time on my phone. The last thing is to maintain good hygiene and keep surfaces in your house as clean as possible to avoid the spread of bacteria and germs, especially if you are in a multi-person household. I think this is just a great practice to implement even on a regular basis when you aren't sick. That said, this video is sponsored by Blue Land, and if you have never heard of them, they are a cleaning line with products designed to make eco-friendly cleaning easier. Their clean essentials kit comes with everything you need to clean your home, including three reusable cleaning bottles, one reusable glass hand soap dispenser, as well as four tablets. And the way that it works is you fill each bottle to the designated line with warm or hot water, drop in the appropriate tablet, and then wait for it to dissolve. After which you can use it immediately, and when the product runs low, you can purchase additional refills for just $2 each. All of the Blue Land products are certified cruelty free non-toxic and do not contain any chemicals or ingredients that are harmful to your health. If you guys would like to check out Blue Land, you can pick up their Clean Essentials kit for $39 using my link in the description box below. You will also get a set of free refills, which is an 18% savings. All right, it just stopped raining outside and I think I'm going to head into the kitchen and show you some really easy tea recipes. I'm really excited about this because I think you're gonna love them. And let's just go in there and get started. Okay, I'm going to be showing you how to make three different really simple teas at home using basic ingredients. I'm going to be making a cinnamon tea, a fresh ginger tea, and a fresh mint tea, all of which have some optional add-ins like honey or lemon, and they're gonna be really nice, soothing, and perfect for a sick day or just a day when you aren't feeling 100% well. I'm doing the ginger tea in a smaller pot. I'm going to make the cinnamon tea in a larger batch, and then I'm going to make my fresh mint tea using our electric kettle. I just turned my burners on, and now I'm going to wait for my water to boil. Um, there's very limited prep work. Basically, the only thing you need to do is peel your ginger. So I'm just going to be using this guy. If your ginger is really kind of knobby, you can break it into pieces so that it's easier to peel. And I just like to peel it because I think it brings out the flavor a lot more in a tea and then I'm going to actually grate the ginger into the water so that it's really, really flavorful. Um, this does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be fully peeled, but I'm just gonna do as best as I can. For the amount of tea that I'm making today, this little piece should be perfect, but if you're making a larger batch, you can of course use more ginger, and you can you know, add as much or as little as you like, depending on how much you like the flavor of ginger in general. All right, water is boiling, so I'm just going to grate my ginger into the water. You can see all that good stuff. When you get down to that last little piece, you can just throw it into the water. I am going to turn my heat off, cover it, and just let it steep for about 10 minutes. The flavor will continue to get stronger the longer it steeps. For the cinnamon tea, I'm just going to add a big cinnamon stick to this pot of water. I'm gonna turn the heat off and cover it. And then at the end, I'm going to add in a black tea bag just to give it a little bit more flavor and a little boost of caffeine. I'm using Yorkshire tea, which is my favorite. Um, you could use any just simple black tea bag or you could completely omit that part. While the other two teas are finishing up, I'm just going to turn on the electric kettle and boil some water over here. 
My water is finished boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and make my mint tea right over here. I have selected three of my favorite teacups. I really think that drinking out of something you love also makes the ritual of having tea uh, better and more enjoyable. For the mint tea, you wanna make sure that you've picked your mint off of the stems, and then you're just going to add really as much as you want into a cup. Since this cup is small, I'm not gonna to go too crazy. And then I'm going to add some boiling water. I'm going to take the saucer from my other teacup and just put that over top temporarily so less of the heat escapes on that one. And then I'm going to check in on my other teas. There's my ginger, beautiful color. And then, oh, oh my gosh, this smells so good. It smells like fall or Thanksgiving or just a really like cozy time of year whatever that is for you. So it's been about 10 minutes for my cinnamon tea and I'm just going to add my black tea bag in for another two minutes. And while the water is hot, I think I will also add some honey. I'm gonna add a really big scoop because this is a big pot of tea. Something else about honey is that you don't ever want to add it to boiling water. Uh, you want to wait for the water to cool down a little bit so that you're not killing the enzymes in the honey. Um, for my ginger tea, I'm going to use this strainer just to get out some of the smaller bits. And I can do that directly over my glass. I'm just going to scoop some in. Hopefully not spill it everywhere. And that is the finished ginger tea. Let's see how our mint tea is doing. Mm, all of the smells, everything smells so good. You can see that the mint tea has really gotten a nice green color. So it's just gonna be like infused from the leaves. Mm. And there we go. So these are the final teas. You can definitely add a little bit of lemon if you prefer. I think I like to keep it as simple as possible for the most part. Let me know if you guys have ever tried these before or if you do try them. And if you have any other tea recipes that you'd like to share or just simple wellness drinks, things like that, uh, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Ooh, the ginger is coming in strong. It's so warming when it's going down. It kind of like warms your whole body up. Mmm. Oh, I love the mint. Oh my gosh, they're all so good. I think I'm going to take some out to Nick. He's working in the garage right now. It's raining again. I'm going to take my last cup of tea into the living room and just relax for a little bit with a book. I got this book for Nick for Christmas a couple years ago. It is basically about a guy who survives on an island by himself for a long time. It's a true story. I have a blanket. These are Nick's slippers, by the way. Who is he? <laughs> Pretty late in the afternoon. The weather is so weird in LA. It keeps going from light to dark to light. It's very disorienting. Um, but I just woke up from a little nap. It felt really nice. And I'm gonna make myself some lunch. The truth is that when I don't feel well, I'm, I'm often not hungry or I have a very small appetite, but I try to continue eating throughout the day. I try to eat foods that are a little bit more bland, a lot of fresh foods, um, fruits, vegetables, things like that. And I also try to avoid dairy as much as I can, especially if I have any type of sinus issues going on. I just feel that it creates a lot of like phlegm. So I typically try to eat fully vegan when I am not feeling well. And I'm gonna keep it really simple for lunch and just make one of my 
uh, snack plates. You guys know me, you know how I do. I think I'll also have one of these ginger shots that I made. Um, I talked about how much I love these ginger shots in my last video, and these are ones that I remade using the same bottles. So I made a batch of these last night, and it came out to eight little shots. Um, because of supermarkets running low on a lot of items, I had a hard time finding big quantities of ginger. So I did ginger, apple, garlic, horseradish, and orange. I think that's it. And turmeric. So it's a weird little combination. I just juiced these using my juicer, and then I pressed the garlic through my press and added that separately and mixed it in. It's kind of like a mini fire cider, if you guys have tried my recipe on that, uh, minus the apple cider vinegar, but I, I really like them. I like any type of like wellness shot. For some reason, it's just a, something that I love. Um, Nick was not a huge fan of these, I will admit. I made him drink one yesterday. I don't think he was prepared for the horseradish or the garlic though. I didn't like give him a heads up. I just asked him if he wanted to take a ginger shot. Tastes like food. There's something wrong with that. Whew. Whew. All right, we're good. So for lunch, I just pulled a couple of things from the fridge. Cucumbers, tomato. This is the tomato leftover from my breakfast. Some multicolored carrots that I already cut up and have been storing in water. And then a grapefruit. And I think I'll have an apple with some of this sweet Thai chili peanut butter. My mom bought me this and it's really, really good. And these insane cashews, they are everything bagel flavored cashews, which is very fitting because I had an everything bagel for breakfast. Here is my lunch, looks incredible. And I have some of that peanut butter and a little bit of vinaigrette for my veggies. I don't know where I'm going to eat it. Maybe I'll eat it in here. It's about 10 p.m. It's pretty late. I'm about to make dinner. Nick and I are kind of on a late schedule because we both took naps today separately. Um, I'm gonna make a really, really simple recipe. I posted about it a really long time ago before on Instagram, but it's basically going to be a miso-based soup. I'm going to make a really large pot of it, and then I'm gonna throw in some tofu and some fresh spinach, and that's pretty much it. Three ingredients, well, four, including water. I just have my miso paste right here, some organic firm tofu, and then some spinach that I washed and uh, have been storing in this glass container. The first thing I'm going to do is just dissolve some of my miso paste in water and then boil some water, add the miso, and then add my tofu and my spinach. That's literally it. It's so good and easy. It's so late, it's like 2 a.m. at the moment, and I'm trying to be quiet because Nick has been in bed since like 10. Um, there were so many other things I wanted to cover in this video that I 
didn't have time to talk about, including supplements that I like to take when I'm feeling under the weather. I had set a few aside that I wanted to talk about, but I think I've mentioned most of these in other videos, and if not, I will get around to it in the future. Right now, I'm just drinking this Immune Support by Hilma Before Bed. It has vitamin C, echinacea, zinc, ginger, turmeric, and ivy extract. Obviously, with herbs, you always want to make sure um, that they don't interfere with any medications that you're taking, but I really like the taste of this one. It's, it's really comforting. In addition, I am absolutely not against Western medicine and definitely feel there's a place for it. I get comments about this sometimes. I absolutely think um, that you should go to the doctor if you don't feel well or you feel like something's wrong. Maybe not at this exact moment in time. I mean, obviously if it's like a life threatening situation, definitely go, but you might wanna also wait with everything happening right now with coronavirus. Anyways, I hope everyone is doing okay. Let me know what you've been up to. Let me know how you've been spending the time, especially if you are like in quarantine. Uh, Nick and I have been home for the last few days. We're absolutely practicing social distancing and completely on board with that uh, to keep everyone safe and to hopefully prevent the spread of this further. In the meantime, I have been watching Grey's Anatomy, you guys. I never got into it myself, but I remember watching it with my mom in like high school when it first came out. So it's kind of nostalgic in a weird way. Um, and anyways, yeah, I'm kind of into it. <laughs> I'll leave you guys with a controversial piece of information about my life. Obviously, I don't have experience working in a hospital or as a doctor or anything like that, but I feel that all of the relationships and side stories and everything in this show are kind of on point with hospitals and doctor's offices. You guys might be able to give me some insight if you are in those fields, um, but I will say that in my past, I have definitely had an affinity for doctors. I dated a doctor for several months when I was 19. He was in his residency at the time, which is similar to what all these people are doing in the show. I mean, it's the same thing. And now he's a brain surgeon. But at the time, you know, I was young. We were both kind of young. He was a lot older than me though. And I was out one night with him and his colleagues, like all of the nurses and doctors and whatnot that he worked with and one of his coworkers told me that he was actually married, which I had no idea at the time. Um, and this story is much more complicated because it would take me a long time to like go into the details. He was basically separated, right? But he had lied about it. So the moral of the story is that I'm actually still on good terms with him. And when everything started happening with coronavirus and people were freaking out, I reached out to him to see what his thoughts were. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you're having a relaxing night. I look forward to seeing you all very soon in my next video and I will talk to you then.